Hi everyone, my name is Taha Zea and I work as a lecturer at Phoenix Financial Training in Dubai. So the question we will be practicing now is called Roboco in which our topic of focus will be relevant costing and within relevant costing we will be looking into make or buy decisions. So where are you going to find this question on the ACCA website? So if you go onto the resources under performance management, please click on specimen exams, which you see here on the left hand side. Just scroll down and click on F5 extra constructed response question. So this is where you will find this very challenging question on relevant costing make or buy decisions called Roboco. If you haven't read through this question, please pause me here go through the question read in detail and in this video i will only be solving the part a of the question so if you've watched um if you have gone through this particular question let me very quickly read you the requirements so part a here is we need to advise roboco whether it should continue to manufacture the keypads and display screens in-house or whether it should outsource their manufacture to the supplier in Pakistan, assuming it continues to adopt a policy to limit manufacture and sales to 80,000 control panels. Now, each control panel requires a keypad and a display screen. So the quantities under discussion here is 80,000 keypads and 80,000 display screens. Now, the problem in this question is that the number given for the purchase price of 4.1 and 4.3 is per unit. But when you look at the cost of manufacturing this in-house, they are all for 80,000 units. And then you've got these five working notes. Some of these costs are variable. Some of these costs are fixed here. So how am I going to answer this particular question? What's the right technique or the way to work around? Well, there are many different ways of answering this question, but this is the technique which I teach in my class to my students to encourage them to figure this out in a quicker way to work around this question in, in a more effective manner. So what I normally tell them in class is you've got to compare the cost of making with cost of buying. Now the problem here is that the cost of making is given for a grand total of 80,000 units. Cost of buying is per unit. Now what is easier for me to do here? Instead of dividing all those values by 80,000, what is simpler is let me multiply the cost of buying of 4.1 with the 80,000. So that's the total cost of buying for keypads and the total cost of buying for display screens is 4.3 into 80,000. You can see I've put the formula here. You can see the formula up in the taskbar. Now let me compare with the cost of making and my tip here to you would be is just look into the variable costs and that's it. So if you if you've read through these notes here, it's only note number one, note number two and note number four which have got an element of variable cost here. So if you look at material cost, it's totally variable. There are certain adjustments to be made in here. I'm just going to click on that for you to see the working I've made here. That's the working you'll do for the display screen. Increase it by 2%. Labor costs will remain the same. So there's not much working. And then you've got machine set up costs. Now the machine setup cost, they've brought in an ABC style working here. You've got to find the number of setups. So I've made reference to working one. So that's the variable element. We know the total part is 26,000, but out of that 4,000 is fixed. So we take that out. We, we said we're only going to focus on the variable element. I'm going to tell you later, why am I asking you to emphasize on the variable element? So I'm going to do the same thing for the display screen. Let me calculate the old number of setups. So we were doing this in sizes of 500 units. So 80,000 divided by 500, that's 160 setups for both here. And now we can calculate the, the machine setup cost per setup. Now the new number of setups will be changing. We've been told it's going to be 200 now. So you can just do that division again and you can find the new variable cost here per setup. So that comes to 27,500 and 30,000 for display screen. So here I've got my numbers here because your number of setups, your production plan has changed. 
uh, and accordingly your setup cost will also change so here you've got these and then I'm going to add up these three numbers here in this particular cell to get the total variable cost now the reason why I've asked you to calculate the variable cost separately because had this variable cost alone be greater than the cost of buying we would have said we are not competitive at all my variable cost itself is not better than the cost of buying then it is better I outsource my production on cost grounds alone only for that reason I've asked you to do the variable cost separately however in this case in both the situations of keypads and display screens the cost of buying is greater than the cost of the variable cost so let me find that extra cost of buying so if we outsource keypads we'll have to pay ninety six thousand five hundred dollars extra if we outsource display screens we will have to pay one thirty five six eighty dollars extra now let me compare these two numbers with the fixed cost saving now this is where you've got to ignore all the irrelevant fixed costs and only pick up those fixed costs which can be saved in full now what this means is there is no partial outsourcing here you either make it or you outsource now even if you're making one keypad you still need the machine you still need the space you will still pay the rent however if you decide to completely outsource you're going to save some money in the heating and power so that's the working you take the 64,000 from that you take out the 50% which you know is not specific to this particular uh, keypad project of outsourcing so it's irrelevant just take out the irrelevant component from it so that's the fixed cost saving 44,000 electricity charges will be saved if we completely outsource keypads 58,000 heat and power related charges will be saved if we completely outsource display screens so that's the the machine setup the specific apportionment how did I know that is a relevant fixed cost here look at the wording of the question so if I just look at the machine setup cost for example it says the keypad machines has fixed cost of 4000 display screens of 6000 while both components are so here it says it relates to this particular product it is related to that product so it's got to be relevant had it been a general fixed cost or a general apportionment then whether you make it or you buy it you will still be spending in that instance it would have been irrelevant so I get these numbers here and then even now depreciation is normally non-cash and it should be an irrelevant but here it says that the remaining 40% and your keyword is specific to the manufacture of the keypad so it's related to the manufacturing and now we are saying if we outsource so we don't have to incur this expense so we're going to save 40% of those expenses here so that's another saving we have let me now add up these three numbers so this will become my fixed cost saving let me just reduce this question space so that you can see my answer so I'm going to calculate my fixed cost saving total for both these products now let me compare these total fixed cost savings with the extra cost of buying now if I were to save more money by outsourcing my decision on cost grounds alone would have been to outsource so let me do 81600 is the saving if I outsource so let me compare these numbers and I'm going to be spending 96500 I'm going to be spending more money saving less here by outsourcing so don't outsource if you look at display screens your extra amount here would be 135680 that's the cash outflow extra cost of buying you will only be saving 102400 again that's less in comparison to the extra cost of buying so here the decision will also be to make it in house so let me write here the decision so the decision here is make it in house and the same decision here as well now when you do any of your workings in spreadsheet unfortunately we cannot be saving it on the platform so you will end up doing most of your practice on the normal spreadsheet but I would still strongly recommend that you come on this platform and familiarize yourself with the questions 
what all formulas work, how does the copy paste function work in here. So familiarize yourself with the aesthetics of it so that on the day of exam you're not finding it hard and, you know, and finding it difficult and challenging. Um, so be familiar with, with these platforms. Um, now in part B of this question, what is happening is that there is a limiting factor here. So that's another very good question. So again, you have an extra cost of buying involved. It's the same situation for keypad and display screen. But this time, you have a constraint. You have a limiting factor. So you will have to decide which product is more expensive to outsource. Because on that basis, you can say, oh, because this product is so expensive to outsource, let me not outsource that product. Let me make that in-house. Let me see how much of my hours will be dedicated to that. Whatever is left over, I'm going to make the remaining product and then I will know how much of outsourcing can be done. So in that case, you can come up with a plan where there is a partial outsource happening, which is more realistic, right? In the real world, now common sense. In part B, you cannot be saying, let me make uh, 80 or all 100,000 um, uh, display screens and let me only make 50,000 keypads. You know, you can't do that because every control panel needs one keypad and one display screen. So you will have to outsource the remainder quantity here. So please make sure that you practice the second part of the question as well as the part C. So if you click on the next button here, this one will take you to part C and that is where you get these non-financial factors which need to be considered when you are making your decision on whether to outsource or not. So it's five marks you're going to be making here, five points on what other factors you need to be considering because this is a new country, it's, an, it's a supplier we haven't worked with. So some of the key points you can be discussing here could be the quality of the product. What if the exchange rate changes? Transportation costs have not been provided here. They could be changing. How reliable is the, is the supplier? Once we outsource any product, it's very difficult to bring it back in-house. What if the demand increases in the future? Will the supplier cooperate with us and make more practical question no book knowledge required the verb here is discuss so identify a point i always tell my students that's the best part with these questions let's say it's five points i'm just going to pick up two points here for example so let's say it's quality let me identify the points first and let's say it's the exchange rate here now if i've identified the points Left, I've left some space in between. I'm going to then put the discussion part here, then the discussion part here, then the third part, let's say, is the reliability of the supplier. So then I'm going to explain that particular point. So you first identify your five points. Once you're done with that, then you can go into the discussion element for that question. So here we come to the end of this video now. All the very best for all those of you who are going to be writing your performance management exam.